The Canadian Human Rights Commission is being called to task. A coalition led by the Black Class Action Secretariat has filed a formal complaint with the international body that accredits human rights organizations around the world. They are asking it to investigate the Canadian Commission for allegedly discriminating against its own employees and to examine whether by extension is really doing its job. These practices not only contravene the Commission's mandate, but also violate international human rights law. Particularly, the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, but most crucially, these actions violate the Paris Principles, which are fundamental to the accreditation of national human rights institutions. The Commission's failure to adhere to these principles calls into question its effectiveness and integrity as a human rights watchdog. Well, with more, we're now joined by Nicholas Marcus Thompson. He is the executive director of the Black Class Action Secretariat and is one of the lead plaintiffs in a $2.5 billion suit against the federal government for systemic discrimination. Uh, Mr. Thompson, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Michael. So uh, I want to begin with this this complaint against the Canadian Human Rights Commission because in, in lodging it, y your coalition makes the allegation that the commission itself is a perpetrator, that it actually uh, contributes to the systemic discrimination uh, that exists within the public service. Is this extreme language just to get attention to your issue? Well, it's not an allegation, it's a finding. Both the Treasury Board, as well as the, the uh, Senate Human Rights Committee, have made these findings, and our organizations collectively has brought those findings that two independent state institutions have made, we've, we've, we've brought those findings to the Global uh, Alliance of National Human Rights Institutions. So they're not allegations, and they're not stretched these are government findings. And in bringing it to this global body, and, and again, this is the body that oversees human rights commissions around the world, what are you hoping to accomplish here? What do you want to come out of that investigation? Accountability. Uh, we're hoping that uh, the government of Canada will take this very seriously. We're hoping that it would bring the uh, reforms that's needed to the Canadian Human Rights Act. Um, and. We, we have a crisis in our public service with discrimination. We cannot have the Canadian Human Rights Commission, which ought to be the lead, being complicit in all of this. We, we need the commission to take a leading role. And in order for that to happen, there, there must be accountability and serious questions in terms of uh, leadership change. And we, we have the same folks who have presided over the discrimination and and have been complicit in it for years, uh, they are now responsible for implementing those changes. Uh, workers have very little confidence in the commission. It is not a deterrent to discrimination in the public service. So when you say accountability, are you looking for punishment? Are you looking for firings? What, what do you want to see happen here? Well, accountability means that in Right now, there hasn't been accountability. There has not been uh, leadership change at the commission. Uh, workers there still face a lot of the same issues. Uh, they tell me how it's still a toxic working environment. Uh, so we're hoping that by taking this fight to the international community, to the body that accredits Human Rights Commission, that we will get those legislative changes. We will get uh, the, the people culture change uh, at the commission. And, and by all means, we are fighting for the commission. We want to see the commission succeed. We want to see it leading uh, with regards to uh, anti-black and systemic discrimination. We want the commission to play a leading role, not uh, to be a, a perpetrator uh, in all of this. So that's the kind of accountability uh, that we're seeking. Mm -hmm. hey, again, the word perpetrator here, how in its actions has the Commission contributed to systemic discrimination? You, you mentioned briefly sure. some of what you've heard, but can you dig deeper? Uh, because for many people that's an umbrella term, but they don't understand what it actually has looked like and how it's affected the people you represent. Okay. Well, for one, 
um, the commission has acknowledged, it has acknowledged the interim chief commissioner has said very clearly, has apologized for this discrimination. She has acknowledged the issue. Um, uh, and what has happened over a period of time is that they have denied black workers promotional opportunities while allowing, uh, the, when you look at the leadership of the commission, uh, this, the, super, the complement of supervisors, we've heard from workers uh, in those entry level positions. It's largely white supervisors, uh, race-based complaints, it's uh, disproportionately rejected at the commission. Uh, and the, to the everyday public service employee who files a complaint to the commission, they're re-traumatized in that process. Uh, there's lengthy delays, there's a lot of those systemic issues, uh, but from those perspective, from a user perspective, race-based complaints have been, the Commission has admitted this, disproportionately rejected, um, and from an employee perspective, they talk about a toxic working environment. Uh, uh, when they advance issues of, of race-based complaints, how that's dismissed, how their work is undervalued, um, how the disproportionate use of non-advertising staffing uh, and that's uh, the beneficiary of that are non-black um, individuals and, and how their careers just are it, it just unable to, uh, to progress. That's the type of uh, discrimination that we're talking about. And you, this morning, after your news conference, you did have a meeting with the Commission. Uh, I'm wondering what came out of that. Has your opinion, or, or the experience rather, has that given you a more positive outlook, give you an outlook, uh, more, more hope perhaps? Well, we need to see action, but I'm hopeful that from those conversations that we started uh, the, the pathway to uh, reconciliation. We're, we're, we're really hopeful, uh, out of uh, mutual respect, um, uh, for the parties, uh, you know, I wouldn't go into further into those conversations. But other than to say that we're we're hopeful that uh, we'll see the reform that's needed at the commission. Um, a lot of the reform it's outside of the commission's um, uh, role. Uh, the the minister of justice has responsibility uh, oversight for the commission. Um, and ultimately bringing those changes to the uh, Canadian Human Rights Act. So we're hoping to see that. We're hoping to see the government uh, actually implement the Employment Equity Act recommendations from the Adele Blackett Task Force that recently made comprehensive uh, recommendations there that we believe, if addressed, will go a very long way in addressing the underrepresentation, particularly recognizing black people as its designated category um, and all of the other uh, protection uh, mechanism in those uh, uh, recommendations. It's very important that the government brings those uh, rec um, uh, amendments uh, uh, to the Employment Equity Act. They've committed to doing it. We just don't know when. In the meantime, the discrimination continues. Well, we continue to watch uh, what happens with this, but Nicholas Marcus Thompson, thank you for the time. Thank you for having me.